Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about mass extinctions once again. The one topic that both fascinates me and also terrifies me at the same time. Mostly because we have no idea when the next mass extinction will occur. But naturally, as humans, we also like to find patterns and we also like to find explanations and preferably explanations to various patterns. And specifically here we're talking about patterns in regards to mass extinction events that have already happened in the past. For example, if we take a look at this particular graph that shows us all of the biggest mass extinctions that happened in the past with the yellow triangles and slightly smaller mass extinctions denoted with blue triangles, first of all, it does actually seem like there is some sort of a pattern happening here there does seem to be some sort of a period of time between them, as if it was some sort of a cyclical event. At the same time, just in general, we usually define a mass extinction as a sudden disappearance of a lot of different species. In other words, it's essentially a disappearance of a biodiversity. And this can happen for many different reasons. But it just so happens that normally a lot of these mass extinction events are also correlated with major occurrences that happen on the planet, usually either space-related or geologic in nature. And so naturally, because of these observations, we're sort of predisposed to believe that maybe most of these mass extinctions did happen because of major asteroid collisions or comet collisions, or because of massive volcanic eruptions that occurred on our planet at least several times in the past. And so even though these events might be actually completely unpredictable, very chaotic, and essentially random in nature, we still like to think that maybe there is some sort of order to all of this madness, and maybe these events do happen for a reason with very predictable patterns. And when it comes to these massive extinction events, the most obvious culprits have always been either volcanic eruptions or asteroids. So for example, when it comes to the volcanic eruptions, the two very well-known ones are the Siberian Traps, which also corresponded to the largest mass extinction event ever, this one right here, and the Deccan Traps in India, which happened around this time, 66 million years ago. Although 66 million years ago is also around the same time that our planet received a very large asteroid strike with the crater located in Mexico on the Yucatan Peninsula, which also happened around the same time as that particular volcanic eruption. And interestingly, if you ever visit this region, it's famous for its cenotes, which are basically kind of like very long caves, limestone caves uh, with a lot of water on the inside, and this was also formed as a result of this particular collision. But there are other asteroid collisions that sort of correlate with various mass extinction events. As a matter of fact, today we believe that at least three mass extinction events in the last 250 million years may have occurred as a result of some sort of a large collision that created a crater at least 100 kilometers in size. But when we talk about these mass extinction events, we also have to make the difference between the marine extinction events, the extinction events of various types of life in the oceans, and the land extinction events. In other words, the events that influence the animal life that lives on the surface of the planet. Because the fossil data does show that they may have happened at different times, and only about 8 out of 10 of the events were correlated. So only 8 marine extinction events were also affecting the animal life on the surface. The other two were only happening in the oceans and not really on the surface. But interestingly, there does seem to be a pattern to them. First, we've discovered that for the ocean life, the extinction events seem to happen approximately every 27 million years. And in the last 300 million years, at least 10 events happened where the marine life suddenly started to decrease in diversity, which is technically what we would classify as an extinction event. And though some of them may have been caused by volcanoes or by asteroids, for some of them, we don't really have any specific explanation just yet. But interestingly, now a new paper that came out very recently that you can also find in the description below, discovered a very similar pattern for the extinction events of various land animals as well. The pattern that seems to be relatively similar, about 27 and a half million years. Which suggests that every 27 and a half million years, something happens to the terrestrial life and it starts to decrease in diversity as well. Now, they don't all necessarily align with one another. Sometimes the marine extinction event happens without the land extinction events, but they do seem to have patterns if we were to look at them mathematically. 
And because of this, naturally, as humans, we wanted to find an explanation to all of this and figure out what is it that's causing these events to become so cyclical and to possibly find a way to predict the next one as well. And the honest answer here is that, well, we don't really know. But the scientists in this paper make an assumption that it does maybe have something to do with various interstellar and galactic interactions that our solar system goes through. For example, there is actually an interesting correlation between various craters forming on the moon and also on our own planet and this unusual cycle as well. In other words, there's actually a cyclical pattern to the formation of various craters. And the suggestion from this paper is that the cycle is also about 27 million years or so. And so there is a possibility that approximately every 26 to 30 million years, there is some sort of a sudden increase in cometary and also asteroid activity that could be actually caused by something on the outskirts of the solar system causing various comets from the Oort cloud to make their way toward the center of the solar system. Well, that's a pretty big assumption though. Is there any possible explanation to any of this? I guess one reasonable explanation is in regards to various stars in the vicinity of the solar system maybe coming a little bit too close to the solar system and destabilizing some of the comets. But why would this be happening every 26 to 30 million years? Well, once again, one possible explanation, although not necessarily the best or the only explanation, is in regards to the motion of the solar system across the galaxy. For example, this image from the European Space Agency shows you how our solar system goes up and down as it goes around the galaxy. This is just a natural oscillation of the solar system as it travels across the galactic disk. This oscillation is basically because of the gravity, with the center itself forming a much more dense area with more gravity, and therefore, our sun goes up and down away from the center of the galactic disk roughly around every 30 million years, although that value has been also suggested to be slightly higher at around 50 to maybe even 70 million years. And the last time it passed through this area was roughly around 3 million years ago, with the current location of the solar system being about 70 to maybe 100 light years away from the center of the galactic disk. And in case you were wondering of the actual speed here, we're moving up at around 5 kilometers per second, but we're also moving toward the center of the galaxy at around 7 kilometers per second, and we're going to reach the closest part of the orbit in approximately 15 million years from now. And so maybe by being in this region closer to other stars, maybe this is what's causing these comets and asteroids to make their way toward the center of the solar system and increase the collisions every 27 million years or so. But that's just one possible explanation, and currently it wouldn't really make sense because it would imply that approximately 3 million years ago there should have been another major extinction event. But we don't think anything major happened. There might have been a smaller extinction event about 2 million years ago, but it wasn't related to an asteroid collision or any kind of a volcanic eruption. So in that sense, this explanation is currently not really perfect. And naturally, this would also not really explain why we have these volcanic eruptions that seem to be also to some extent cyclical that do actually cause extinction events as well. So maybe there's something else going on here and some other cyclical event, or maybe this is random after all. And we're just seeing pattern where there is nothing there. And so for now, it's definitely a very interesting discovery. It's interesting to hear and to see that there are unusual cyclical patterns to these extinction events, but we just don't have any good explanation for what's really causing this. And also, most importantly, we can't really predict when the next one is going to happen. Obviously, maybe humans are going to be responsible for the next extinction events. Hopefully not though, but whether it's some sort of a galactic motion of the solar system around the galaxy or some other unknown event that causes increase in collisions and also increase in volcanic activity, we might know one day. We just don't know what it is yet, so we can't really make any assumptions. But on that note, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. We've basically discovered a pattern that seems to be really interesting but has no good explanation just yet. But obviously, once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. And on that note, hopefully you'll subscribe. Maybe you'll share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, you can support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful Persian t-shirt that, oh, apparently I'm not wearing right now. But nevertheless, it's a cool shirt. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.